Hi there guys, how are you doing? This is your friend and tutor Manas and guys today in this session I'm going to talk about the second definition for hyperbola and based on that we're going to be taking up one problem also. So let's see what it has in store. Here we go. So it says it is the curve traced out by the locus of a point P such that the difference of its distance from two fixed points is always same. So right now we're going to be assuming that those two fixed points are named by F1 and F2 and this is the point P for which we're going to be keeping a track on. Now in order to understand this sort of definition we're going to have to take the help of this diagram. So let's have two fixed points F1 and F2 and we're going to join both of them by a simple straight line. Let's have the center of that line and let's say it's named by O. Now what we're going to be doing is let's say we have this point P over here in the form of P1 and what I'll be doing is I'll be joining P1 with F1 and P1 with F2. So basically the definition is trying to say the distance difference P1 from F2 minus P1 um, F1 is going to be equal to say this point reaches here somewhere here in the form of position 2 let's say the point there A is regarded by P2 and when you try to take this distance P2 F1 and P2 F2 okay again it's going to be same like this p2 f2 minus p2 f1 is going to be same to something it is going to be equal to something what is that i'm going to be telling you just after say 30 or 45 seconds now let's have another point v1 all right so the distance of v1 from f2 and the distance of that same point v1 from f1 is going to be equal to again all of them are equal all right now let's keep this going we have this position 3 in the form of point 3 p3 with f2 and p3 with f1 similarly we're going to have one more point here also and even towards this side towards the right of o we're going to have more points in the form of q q1 from f1 and q1 from f2 so let's just write this down q1 f1 minus q1 f2 and if you keep on doing so let's say this position 2 q2 f1 minus q2 f2 it's again going to be equal to something then we have this v2 v2 f1 minus v2 f2 and this keeps on going okay and these are all what you call the track points p1 p2 p3 p p4 and from q1 to q4 now the behavior of this point is such that no matter where it goes it is always going to follow this the difference is going to be same all these differences no matter which position it is in right now all the difference from two fixed points is going to be same okay and when it does so you're going to have this curve let me show you what it is and this guys is what you call a hyperbola so whenever a point behaves in such a manner it's going to form a hyperbola and the difference is actually nothing but v1 v2 and this v1 and v2 is what we refer to as vertex let me write that down vertex or vertices to be very precise vertices all right so the next problem that i'm going to take up is based on this definition and we're going to see how that can be made so this is basically um what do you call this arcs of circle methods that i'm going to be taking up for solving that problem so let's see how it goes Two points A and B are 50 millimeters apart. Draw the curve traced out by a point P moving in such a way that the difference between its distances from A and B is always same and is equal to 20 millimeters. Also locate its asymptotes. All right. So whole lot of things are there. So there are two points. Okay. Now these two points A and B are what you call foci okay plural f1 and f2 all right now these two points f1 f2 have been spaced 50 millimeters apart now by for explaining you the definition those two fixed points were named by focus 1 and focus 2 but as far as this particular problem is concerned these two foci have been named by a and b so what we're going to do is a b distance has been taken has to be taken as 50 millimeters now apart from that there is this point p okay the distance of that point P from focus 1 that is A and its distance from point B that is focus 2 is always same and is equal to 20 millimeters. So this has already been given to us in the question. 
And when you speak of the definition of hyperbola, this distance, the di difference is actually equal to the distance between the vertices. So we're going to be plotting this, we're going to be plotting this, and based on these two data, we're going to be making this hyperbola with the help of arcs of circles method. All right, now this method we've already used um, in ellipse preparation also. Okay, it's a very popular method and it's uh, very easy to use also. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the real stuff. So initially I have drawn a line, you have a center line and we're going to be making two points V1 and V2 separated by a distance of 20 millimeters. All right. Now we're going to be making points A and B which can be referred to as the foci separated by a distance of 50 millimeters. Okay, what to do now? Now for making this sort of concave shaped hyperbola, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be placing points, okay, somewhere here. One, two, and three. All right. So what's next? Okay. You need to keep one leg of your compass here at P1 and the other leg at 1. With that much amount as the radii and with A as the center, you're going to have to put an arc. Like this, over here. And with that much amount, again as the radii, you're going to put an arc over here also. Again with that much radii and with B as the focus, you're going to have to put an arc over here and over here. Something like this. All right, so we have put up four arcs. All right, let me write that, write them down. So we have put up four arcs to put up, put up arc and cut arc. So for putting up arcs, what I've basically done is I've taken this distance from V1 to 1. Oh, no, 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 from V1 to 1. And for cutting those arcs, I'm going to be taking this distance from V2 to 1. Okay. For putting these two arcs, let's say for this arc, V1 to 1, A and B as focus. For putting these arcs, you have taken A and B as focus or rather as centers. And for here also, we're going to be taking A and B as centers. But the difference is that arcs are to be put up on the other side. All right. And for here on the same side on same side let me explain you once again what that is okay so initially what we did we took an arc so that arc was from v1 to 1 okay so we took a as the center we put up an arc over here over to the other side and again here also again with that much amount from v1 1 as the radii we took b as the center and we again put up Two arcs one over here to the other towards the other side and over here also now we have two four arcs and all these arcs are to be cut by this v21 so v21 one. one leg of your compass here other leg over at one with that much amount as the radii and now with a as the center and on the same side okay a as the center you're gonna put cut rather so this is gonna be your point in the hyperbola and again this arc also has to be cut on the same side again with b as the center cut this this one and this one all right so we have four points now on the hyperbola all right it's going to be sort of concave in shape and now in the next step what we're going to be doing is this one will change to two okay this one will also change to two now for taking this arc what we're going to be doing is v1 to two so keep one leg of your compass here at v1 other leg at two and with that much amount that is v12 as the radii and with a as the center you have to put an arc okay here over to the other side and here that much amount as the radii that is v12 and with b as the center towards the other side we'll put one arc over here and one arc over here so again we have as many as four arcs for four arcs we're gonna have four intersection points and for that we need four cutting arcs so what is that cutting arc that cutting arc is nothing but v2 2 v2 2 but on the same side so with A as the center and on toward on the same side, we're going to be cutting this arc and this arc. So keep one leg of your compass at V2, other leg at 2, that much amount as the radii. You're going to have to cut this, taking this A as the center and here also, again with A as center. Now with B as center and V2, 2 as radii, you're going to cut this arc over here, up off the same side and here also. Okay. So you can see this concave in shape. Okay, this is exactly what you call a hyperbola and when you join all these points, you're going to get a curve popularly known as a hyperbola, right?
Okay, now we're supposed to draw asymptotes for this hyperbola. What is that? Now, just guys, try to listen to this definition, and after drawing those asymptotes, I'm going to show you its physical relevance. Now, asymptote is nothing but a line which meets the curve at infinity. That directly or indirectly means that it's never going to meet the curve because no one on planet Earth has seen infinity. All right. So, for drawing that line, asymptote, what are you going to be doing is we're going to be taking this AB as the diameter and O as the center, and with that much, we're going to be drawing a circle. All right. Now with V1 and V2, okay, from V1 and V2, we're going to be drawing vertical lines upstairs and downstairs, something like this, okay, upstairs and downstairs. You can clearly see that the periphery, the periphery or the circumference of the circle is being cut at four points, one over here, here, and here, and here. Now what we're going to be doing is let us join them over to the other side also. You can clearly see if you try to have another point for point three, you can also do the same stuff. You're going to have a point over here, okay and if you keep on marking points if you keep on locating them on the hyperbola you'll realize that those points come closer towards this line but they are never going to meet this line that's why the definition says the line which meets the curve at infinity is regarded as an asymptote and then these three points in sequence okay are to be joined with the help of a line so these are the asymptotes right so guys that was all from my side if you have any doubts or queries do write them down in the comment section below i'll be very happy to answer them and if you find this video helpful, do give it a big thumbs up. And if you guys believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of engineering drawing, then do recommend this channel to your friends and classmates and your juniors so that everybody can learn engineering drawing in the best possible way. I'll be taking up some more problems from different topics in the upcoming videos. Until then, it's a wrap for today. This is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care, have a great day and keep drawing.